So this morning we have a special guest, Dr. Elizabeth Marnick. I'm grateful to understand her, not just as a colleague, but also as a friend. Elizabeth, I'm so grateful you can be with us. Elizabeth, um, you got your biochemistry at uh, Central Connecticut State, your PhD in genetics through a col collaborative program with Tufts and Jacks. And um, you're now assistant professor of molecular biochemistry at Hassan. And um, you're one of those people who I don't really think um, sleeps because then you go on to say, in your free time, you are a passionate science communicator. And that's been true. I know how much time and effort and thought you've put into explaining what's going on with COVID and explaining the vaccine on your many Facebook feeds. And if that weren't all enough, you are a marathoner, a photographer, a mom to Owen, and you are married to one of my all-time favorite people, Isaac, who is the director of the Seacoast Missions EDGE program. So, Elizabeth, I think of you as the, as the Dr. Shaw of Down East Maine, but really, I think we should understand Dr. Shaw as the Dr. Elizabeth Marnick for the rest of Maine. You are brilliant, you are compassionate, and you're here to tell us a little bit about the COVID vaccine. Welcome, Dr. Elizabeth Marnick. Oh, Rob, thank you so much for having me. And it's an honor to be here. And almost four years ago today, well, not almost four years ago in June, uh, Rob married Isaac and I. So it's very nice to be here. Um, so I hope that you guys can see my slides. If you can't, just let me know. Someone can unmute themselves and warn me. Usually they work. Um, but I'm just going to talk to you guys a little bit about how the COVID-19 vaccines that are currently being used to vaccinate the population work. I do wanna just give a few disclaimers before I start. One is that I have no financial ties to any vaccine or pharmaceutical companies. My sole purpose being here and doing the education that I do is just to help people have the correct information and to help them make informed decisions. And I know that some of you may have a lot of questions. I obviously didn't have time to cover everything because there's a lot of details. So you can find me on Instagram at sciencewizliz. I also have other social media accounts that people can follow me. Um, or I have a website and at my website there's an email address or Rob can put you in touch with me and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. So the first thing that I wanted to just briefly remind people of is how your immune system works. So you have a lot of cells that make up all your immune system. A lot of people in the media just talk about antibodies, but antibodies are only one part of your immune system. You have two whole sections of your immune system. One is called the innate immune system. One is called the adaptive immune system. And I like to equate the innate immune system as the first responders that are on the scene of an accident. Your innate immune cells, they're the ones that first recognize that something foreign, like a bacteria or virus, has entered your body. They try to get rid of it. If they can't, then they're like, well, we need backup. So then they recruit the adaptive immune system cells and they can help eliminate the infection. So those adaptive immune cells are like the specialized doctors and nurses that you would find in a hospital who can provide the extra medical care you need if the first responders weren't able to take care of it at the scene. So you have all of these immune cells that work to help you fight an infection. So this is just a small snapshot of what might happen to somebody if they're infected with the virus that causes COVID-19 which is called SARS-CoV-2. So if you're infected with this virus, what happens is that your innate immune cells like to eat those things. They eat anything that they recognize as foreign. And when they do that, they then present some of those proteins from the virus on their cell surface. You can think of them as little flags to say like, hey guys, there's something going on here. We need to recognize that this doesn't belong. That will then eventually cause your adaptive immune cells to become activated and they are specifically tailored to fight any sort of specific infection that you get. So once your adaptive immune cells become activated, they will help clear the infection. The really cool thing about these adaptive immune system cells though, is that they are the cells that form our memory cells. So our immune system can form memory B cells, memory T cells, and antibodies. And it's those three types of cells that will then help you if you're re-exposed to the virus or the bacteria later on. And we'll talk about how that's slightly different when we talk about vaccines in a second. The other thing I wanna talk about is the vaccines that are being used right now, two of them are called mRNA vaccines. And I wanna just make sure people know what mRNA is. So inside of our cells, this is a very simplified view of a cell, but inside of our cell, we have a part called a nucleus. And inside that nucleus is our DNA. 
And our DNA contains all of the directions needed to make all of the components, all of the proteins that make life. They make your muscles, your skin, your hair, all of the components needed. So those directions have to stay safe. So they stay within the nucleus. But the proteins that actually build your organs and build your body are made in what we call the cytoplasm. So we have to get the directions from the DNA out into the cytoplasm where they can be used to make protein. And that intermediate is called mRNA. So what will happen is you'll get an mRNA molecule made from your DNA in the nucleus. It will then leave and go into the cytoplasm where it's used to make protein. That mRNA molecule is very fragile. It gets broken up very quickly. It does not get back into the nucleus. So I know one common concern people have about the mRNA vaccines is that they could damage your DNA. But that's not possible because the RNA does not stick around for very long, but also the RNA, it's only a one-way street. It goes from the nucleus out to the cytoplasm. It can't go backwards. It can't go back from the cytoplasm into the nucleus. The other thing I wanted to mention is that, so this is a, this little picture on the left is a photo of the virus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And those little red proteins on the cell surface are the spike protein. And it's that protein that helps a virus infect your cells because a virus can't make copies of itself without infecting an organism. So what happens when you get infected with SARS-CoV-2 is that your body is turned into a viral making factory and your body just makes all of the copies of this virus because the virus can't reproduce without doing that. So the spike protein is how your, the virus can enter your cells and then use your cells own tools to make copies of itself. So what scientists did is as soon as they realized that this was going to be a problem, that this virus was going to cause a lot of infections, they sequenced the whole genome, the whole directions to make all of the virus. And they focused just on this little area in green. And that area in green is just the part of the genome that has the directions to just make the spike protein. So what that means is that the vaccines cannot give you the virus because it's missing all the other directions needed to make the full virus. All the vaccines contain is just the directions to make the spike protein. And when we're talking about the mRNA vaccines, so these are the Moderna or Pfizer vaccines, what these vaccines contain is that direction to make just the spike protein. And because RNA is so fragile, it's enclosed in a lipid bubble. And that lipid bubble helps to make sure that the RNA can actually get inside your cell. And then what ends up happening is that when you get that vaccine, you have immune cells that are in the site in your arm near where the, vac uh, the vaccination occurs. And those innate immune cells will recognize that that vaccine doesn't belong. And it will engulf those vaccine molecules just like it would engulf a natural infection. But then what happens is that mRNA from the, vi the vaccine is in the cytoplasm of the cell. And the cell knows what to do with RNA. It doesn't know that the RNA is not its original RNA. It just sees RNA and knows automatically to make that into protein. So that results in the innate immune cell beginning to make the spike protein. When that happens, the innate immune cell shows those little spike proteins on its surface and that activates your adaptive immune system. So just like in a natural infection, this results in the formation of memory cells. The great thing about this is that you don't have to worry about getting any of the bad effects of COVID-19 because it doesn't contain the actual virus. It only contains just that small spike protein. So your body is able to make those memory cells that will protect you against the real infection without having to actually be exposed to the real virus. So I also just briefly want to say how this varies from the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And this technology is also the same that's used for the AstraZeneca vaccine, which may be approved here in the US soon. But what ended up happening is that they took the RNA directions for the spike protein, made that into DNA, and then they took, they're using a virus that's called an adenovirus. And that virus is a normal virus that usually causes a common cold but it's been modified so it can't make humans sick and it can't replicate. So all it is is it's acting like that Trojan horse to get the directions to make the spike protein into your cells. So what ends up happening is that that vaccine, when you get it, again, you have those cells at the site of the injection. The adenovirus will enter that cell, put the spike protein directions into the nucleus, and then those directions will be used to make RNA. And then once that RNA is in the cytoplasm, it will make 
just the specific spike protein. So again, you can't get the actual SARS-CoV-2 infection from this vaccine because you're only making that spike protein. And then just like in the other vaccines, once your cell, your immune cells see that spike protein, they're gonna mount an immune response and then that will protect you against the real virus if you are exposed to it. So the one other, two, there are two other things I want to say before I end. And one is that a lot of people think that those side effects that you get after you get a vaccine means that you're getting sick. And that's not true. Because when you're normally exposed to something that's getting you sick, your immune system is kicking in. So a lot of the symptoms that you associate with your being sick is actually because your immune system is being activated, which is the same thing that happens in a vaccine. So again, these vaccines can't actually give you the virus because they don't have the directions to make anything but that spike protein. And then I just wanna mention, I know people have a lot of concerns about the timeline and how they made this vaccine so quickly. And we didn't skip any safety steps. We were able to use all of the previous research that had been done on the SARS virus because the SARS virus and this virus are very similar. So scientists were able to use all of our years of research on that virus to adapt the vaccines that we had been working on for those on um, the SARS virus for this virus. So all of the same safety steps were taken. They were just done in overlapping order so we could get it quickly, but none of the safety steps were skipped. So the bottom line, is that these vaccines generate an immune response that will ultimately protect you by making those memory cells. All of these vaccine, vaccines show great effectiveness at decreasing disease symptoms and protecting you from getting hospitalized or dying from COVID-19. They all have also been shown to be safe. So in case you're wondering, the best vaccine is the one you can get first because while you, if you get offered a vaccine and you don't wanna take it because you think a different one's better, that whole period while you're waiting, you're vulnerable to getting the actual COVID-19 infection and you don't know what your consequences of that would be. Um, and as I've mentioned before, if anyone has any questions, I'm gonna stick around and be here at the end. So I'd happily answer any questions then, but also you can contact me through any other contact method. And thank you very much for listening and thank you much for having me be here, Rob. Oh my gosh, Elizabeth, thank you so much. Um, as this as all unfolded, I realized how limited my knowledge was of biology from high school 35 plus years ago. And this has been kind of a crash course in what is now relevant and helpful. And Elizabeth, thank you so much for sharing a bit of your expertise and also some encouragement for all of us as we figure this out, walk this road together.